and welcome to my video all about everything I crocheted in the months of June and July. There is one thing I have included that I haven't crocheted, it's sewn instead, but it's crafty so I thought I'd include it. Uh, in June I didn't think I'd really uh, created enough original uh, items, uh, so I didn't uh, decide to make a video for June, and instead I've combined June and July together to make it a bit more uh, inspirational hopefully so if you're looking for some crochet ideas uh, this algamation of the two months will hopefully uh, give you a bit more inspiration there so without further ado the first thing I made in the month of June is this elephant which I'll put here because it's already gone to its new owner it was a baby shower present and it was created in this yarn in James Seabrett, supposed to be chunky in the shade, I think those are the colours down there, B43. Uh, really bright colour. I did uh, make the whole elephant in a King Curl Yummy yarn and I ran out of yarn for the last year. I done everything else except the last year and I can't find it online. I found it in the local shop. But I would have had to drive 20 minutes there and 20 minutes back and I was being quite lazy so I didn't do that. And so instead I just bought some of this uh, James C. Brett yarn because I needed a big order of uh, Chanel yarn anyway. So that was the first thing I made. My nuts are on my phone down here. So if you see me looking down there, that's what I'm doing. They will open. There we are. The second thing I made, I just wanted a quick project, something I can do whilst my family came over and I was talking to them. I decided to make a few little bookmarks. They were really, really simple, really quick. I think it took me about 10 minutes. Uh, they are on my previous video because I did make them for my market, which I have a video all about. Um, it's just a simple flower and then a chain. Uh, really, really quick. This one's my favourite, this red colour here. I think I, oh, I was going to charge a pound, but I've got to take them with me to my fair. So these will be coming with me tomorrow. I'm just taking my sister to a car boot sale, so I'm going to bring a few bits along as well. I've got some white ones. Uh, these ones I haven't weaved in these ends, but I'll get around to that later. So that was the second thing I made. I have also made some beanies. I made five beanies for a work colleague and she sent me a picture with what she would like on the beanies and I uh, came up with, I used a pattern inspiration and uh, I managed to make them look as similar to them pictures as possible and I've sent them to her as well so I'll put a picture of them here. Five different colours, some really cute ones and I, I did enjoy making them, I do enjoy making the Katia beanie. Um, I don't enjoy making other beanies, interestingly, but cat ear beanies I really like. In fact, I've got one just here. That's one I always wear. It's my, my favourite mustardy colour as well. So the next thing I made to look at my notes. Oh, so I made some scrunchies and some soft toys again for my craft fair. Some of these, if you watched my previous video, you may have seen, but I've added to the collection, some sold, yeah, I've made some new ones, just a few basic scrunchies, I made some pink ones, this is from my, these ones I made for my Barbie outfit. I've got a few in this uh, colourway as well, this is all James C. Brett uh, yarn. Then I've also got some in this really pretty uh, colour as well, I won't spend too long on uh, my scrunchies. I also have my, um, what are these called? Business cards. Business cards in my scrunchie box, just so I remember them there. In my little label for them as well. So, scrunchies, £3 or two for £5. Next, my notes have gone off, let me load them again. There we are. Soft toys. So, the soft toys I made, uh, I've made since the fair include these little turtles. I've never made turtles before and they are adorable. I've made three of these. There's enough point showing you all three because they're exactly the same. I'll, come, I'll hold another one so I've got one. But either side, but aren't they just so cute and so floppy? I love a I love the little floppy limbs. They're very adorable. I enjoyed making these and I do want to make these in lots of different colour combinations. I have things like a dark pink and a light pink and a dark blue and a light blue so I'm hopefully going to colour combine them that way. Underneath these I have these two adorable little bears. I must admit that I saw, um, a f uh, I went to a fair and I saw a stall, I think it's called Painty Paws, I'll link it in the description below, 
and they sold something very similar to this and I thought they were adorable so I've taken inspiration from them. I have also just last night I started making bees so this is very much not in order anymore but along the soft poly line so I thought I might as well talk about them now. So my first two bees I thought oh I can do it I don't need to look at pattern so this was one bee and this was the other bee and obviously they do not look quite right. So what I like to do is if I do do a fair or tomorrow my car boot sale, I'll wrap them up in brown paper and I'll put them in a lucky dip box and say a pound for lucky dip. And then these will hopefully sell. But then after that, I looked at other people's bees to see where the wings should be placed. And I made three of these, which are much better. All the same. Again with James C. Brett Yarn. And they are pretty adorable. And I, again, never made bees before. Um, I'm happy to make them. Uh, but it's not something I make for myself. So it is a bit of a chore making them, if you're going to do those, I imagine. I also have some dinosaurs. I've wanted to make dinosaurs for the longest time. Here they are. And I've got these, uh, as I said earlier, the dark blue, light blue combination. And I got one in the same colour I did my scrunchies in. This one I used a 5mm hook for. These ones I used a 6mm hook for. You can see the size difference. And then I've got some pink ones as well. I want to do a few more of these tomorrow and there they are very cute what else have i got okay so the next thing we were having a 1920s night out and i had a flapper dress and a few bits of jewelry i just needed the perfect accessory i thought i might as well crochet something so i crocheted a 1920s hat i'll it's not gonna look great because i've just had my fringe cut um <laughs> but you can see uh it fits really nicely it's got this lovely edging. I really like the way this came out. I enjoyed wearing it. Uh, I also made another one. I made one in purple. But this one, I followed the pattern. This one, I went off the pattern a little bit. This one, I followed the pattern exactly. Uh, and it's too small. And I've got oh, apparently an extra small head, according to one go karting uh, instructor who gave me an extra small helmet without even saying anything. Um, but this one's still too small, so I guess this one's a child size. Look, it's absolutely tiny. Very, very tight. It'll fit, but I won't wear that one out. Uh, so that was a really nice accessory for my 1920s night out. We then have, oh, I had a commission. Oh, it's getting very bright in here all of a sudden. Maybe if I do that. I know, I'll use a B. I'll use a B to uh, block out the sun. Slightly effective. Uh, I had a commission to make a horse uh, for, an, again, not for a baby shower present, but for um, a newborn baby. And I believe the horse is, um, it is, the idea is for it to look the same as the horse that has recently passed away of the mother of the baby to be. Uh, so I had a picture, several pictures of the horse, and my mission was to make the I'm going to as similar to that horse as possible. So I did. I did all the legs individually. I can't I can swap my bee over for this horse now. I'll stand here. Uh, the arms and legs are all uh, different from one another. The uh, belly is different. The back has a specific pattern on. Uh, the mane itself has got some white at the bottom, some brown there. And obviously the white stripe down the middle. It's very similar to... I, I hope it's very similar to the uh, pictures of the horse that I was sent and I'm, I'm quite happy with this and I've shown it to the person it's being sent to and he's very happy uh, I just need to actually give it to him now I'm actually trading this horse for a sword which is a cool story he's got a sword he's selling I decided I wanted to buy it so we'll swap in this horse for the sword I think that's a really good trade I never traded crochet for swords before I'll see if I can uh, put a picture of the sword on the screen if I have a picture by then. I don't know. Uh, next, what did I make after the horse? I made a hot potato. I had a former colleague, a really, really lovely colleague, who teaches a year one class. And she asked me for a small potato that she could use for circle time during the class. So the idea is whoever is holding the potato gets to speak and you pass it on and so on. I made that, it was a really lovely, um, really lovely production and I have sent it on to her so a picture of it is here hopefully. Uh, it's got a little patch on and I think it's, it's very cute, it came out quite cute. I was, I'm never sure about things when I first make them but when I look back I'm like oh yeah that was actually really cute. 
The next thing was just something nice and simple, the strawberry granny square. I really enjoyed making this. I was, I needed something to, to get my creative juices flowing again. So I thought I'd just do a random granny square. I, I quite like making random granny squares this size. And then one day I'm gonna put them all together and I'm gonna have this crazy card again is my idea. I have got the other granny squares here, but first let me just tell you something else about this. When I was making it, I was using a slightly bigger hook than was recommended. And obviously you could see the red and green thread through it. So I had to keep cutting the ends and I had upwards of 50 ends to weave in. So that was fun. It wasn't too bad. I knew it was coming and I knew I was only going to do one of these. So if I had to do 50 or something, if I have to do 50 squares, no thank you. Uh, but a few other squares, because I haven't shared them on YouTube yet, but I've got uh, this adorable fox square. He's only blocking, but I'll get there. A turtle. I really like turtles in this episode, don't I? It's like a turtle episode. A sunflower. 3D sheep, which is looking pretty cute. And the last one is bees and a beehive. And this is my mum's favourite. So my granny squares, that will eventually be a crazy cardigan. Next, I have ooh, a strawberry bag. So this is my sewing project that I did. I have previously made one of these bags with the help of my friend who's um a lot more advanced than I am in sewing and it took us about six hours to do it from start to finish. This bag I was doing by myself and I was also using cotton thread instead of polyester thread and it kept snapping and it was driving me crazy but I didn't have any white polyester so I decided to just keep going and then eventually I stopped and went out and bought some polyester thread and finally managed to finish it. It took uh, so long. It took two full days pretty much. Uh, but it was a gift for a really really lovely friend and I hope she likes it and here is a picture of it which she took because she's excellent at uh, photographing things and actually has her own um, Instagram for uh, photography alongside her partner fiance. Next I have another commission and this was a sage baby blanket. If you have watched my other videos, you will have seen a blue baby blanket in the dragonfly pattern. And this is exactly the same, but in sage. So here it is. Again, it still needs blocking. But how pretty is this? I used another uh, blanket. I, I suppose I used the dragonfly emblem as inspiration. Emblem, pattern as inspiration, but I, then I did come up with a motif uh, pattern myself as alongside the whole blanket and I have written down everything that I did so I may one day make a pattern for it but most of the people I have on Instagram seem to uh, do amigurumi pattern testing so I'm not sure if anyone would be willing to do a full blanket pattern test so maybe in the future I will see if anyone would like to pattern test it but this is for a, a baby shower again and it matches some baby bonnets that I made in the month of May, I think it was. So, really lovely uh, blanket and I'm quite happy with that. Next, on my notes. Oh, so we were going to see the, we weren't going to see the Barbie movie. Some people were going to see the Barbie movie and we were having a Barbie night out. So all of us dressed as Barbie or Ken. I think the theme was uh, Barbenheimer, but only one person dressed as Oppenheimer and it was a great outfit. And um, everybody else looked amazing as well. So as I've already said, I made these scrunchies for it. I also made a rose choker, which goes like that and wraps it around. I enjoyed making this. Not much else to say about that. Oh, I did use the Stylecraft Bambino yarn, so it's really soft. And in the same yarn, I also made my favorite project possibly ever inspired by amazing pages barbie uh, video she made a bag herself and i thought oh, i'd like to make a bag i was going to make a blera at first with the same yarn but then i decided to make a bag because it would be more practical and i came up with this clutch bag i used half double crochets in the bottom then i um, half double crocheted in the third loop at the back to make this one stand out and then I used the jasmine stitch, which I've never used before, and oh my goodness, it is beautiful. Can you see the uh, 
flower motif that it produces. It's so, so pretty. In a charity shop a few weeks ago, I managed to buy, here it is, right next to me handily, this massive petal button for £4. So there's a couple that are the same and some that are completely unique. And yeah, one of these was this button. I thought this went perfectly. Uh, I did realise that after I'd done it that I'd sewn the button up too high. I think it needs to be lower and then these bits won't flap around as much. But I uh, I made it the night before I needed it at about 6pm and then I was still there furiously crocheting at 12am the next day, obviously with a sleep in between. And uh, I needed to get it done before I left. So I would like to line this as well and I haven't got around to it but I will be lining this in the future as well. And then I made a second one because it was such a lovely pattern and here is my second one in a more neutral colour yarn again with a, a, a unique button and just look at this this jasmine stitch it's so pretty it might be my uh, favourite stitch I've come across uh, I have written the pattern for this as well what I need to do is obviously make another one and take photos as I'm doing it to aid the pattern testers and I also want to film myself making it so that I can upload a tutorial to YouTube as well eventually, we'll see if that happens. Uh, I need uh, something, a camera, a stand on which to hold my phone camera, then I'll be able to you know, crochet it whilst the phone's looking down on my hands crocheting. So I would like to get that done as soon as possible. It's just such a pretty pattern and I'm really proud of myself for doing it. I've been crocheting for three years and I'm finally creating some patterns of my own, which I'm surprised I haven't done before now. But I tend to take inspiration from other people rather than coming up with things myself. So it has taken me three years to come up with my own things, really. And that is everything. That is everything that I have crocheted in the past two months. I'm sure I've forgotten a few things. I've definitely crocheted. A few more pairs of mushroom earrings for um, Etsy buyers and things like that. But uh, if I showed them every month, it'd just be showing you mushrooms and more mushrooms and more mushrooms because they're my biggest seller. Uh, but yeah, that is everything I have crocheted in these past two months and so on. I will hopefully do another one of these videos for next month in the month of August. It is now some nice summer holidays, so I imagine I'll be crocheting a lot more. And I've got a lot of ideas. I've got some medieval ideas I'd like to uh, do as well. And um, I'm updating my craft room. So I'm actually going to have something across the ceiling that I'm going to crochet. I'm in the process of crocheting. So hopefully that'll be a future video, perhaps. Uh, everything I've crocheted for my craft room. Something like that. Well, thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, please go follow me on Instagram at snowdrop.crafts, which I uh, host with my lovely friend Megan. And please subscribe and like this video if you did. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.